I'd like to recess the executive session and we will reconvene after this meeting. So now I will call to order Monday, February 11th, the regular meeting. Uh, we are all present. Um, and um, so I would like to have the invocation, please, and the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Laura Tano. Please stand. Dear God, we ask that this council be given guidance to make the wise decisions to help the citizens of our community and their families live their best lives possible in your name. We ask for your protection for those that serve our city in all areas, including police and fire. And we ask that you have special protection for those serving our military at home and abroad. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Loritano. All right, we'll go to the first communications. Tonight we have three communications. Nathan Torres will start by, I'm sorry, Nathan's not going to be doing it. Debbie Devinney will be up. Debbie, uh, if you'll come forward, please, and give us a preview on the 2013 spring training. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor Lord and Council. <coughs> there we go. Um, well, as we all know, our fifth year is coming up shortly here in about a little bit more than a week and a half. February 22nd is our first game, so we are in the throes of preparations for our fifth anniversary, and so we should have some excitement this year. Um, we just have 11 days to go. Mm -hmm. So. Right now, um, we're, we've just completed volunteer training. We've trained more than 200 volunteers last week um, through about four or five different training sessions. This week, we're doing staff training, so it's kind of an exciting time of year at the ballpark. We get to see everybody excited about spring, and um, they're our biggest ambassadors. We're putting the finishing touches on the ballpark, so we're installing signage, and our new padding went in this, this week. We're just about complete with that. And um, one of our hardest working staff members, Zizzy, has been doing school visits. As you can see in this one, he was at Imagine Avondale last, last week and he's got um, scheduled all, to be all around Goodyear schools in the next uh, month. And so if there's anywhere that anyone hears of, please let us know, we will absolutely send him out. He's gonna be partnering with Slider and Mr. Redlegs of the, of the Red, Redlegs. so that we send all three of them out and um, get everybody excited about spring training. So this year we're, looking to continue on the success that we've built so far over the last four years and um, some of our ratings kind of show this we were awarded the um, or voted best of Phoenix best place to see a spring training game from the Phoenix New Times and that was um, this past year as well as 2010 so twice in the last four years we feel is probably a pretty good thing considering there are nine other facilities so we're proud of that and we'd like to just build on what we've done so far um, our high ratings of our friendliness of our, our friendliness of our staff, our facility cleanliness, and the quality of food, and generally they lead to the overall experience. And um, on a five-point scale, 4.76 is pretty good. So we we intend to keep it that way. And um, you know we don't we don't we survey throughout the season. We usually do between 400 and 500 surveys, and those are intercept surveys. So we talk to fans and ask them about their experience, and we don't pull out the bad ones. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if what we have planned, opening weekend is February 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Um, Friday, February 22nd is actually our first game, it's 105, and it'll be the Indians against the Reds. That is the charity game, so all of the team proceeds will be going to uh, Arizona in Action, as well as the Homeless Youth Connection, those will be split. So the, um, all the team proceeds, again, will benefit those uh, great local charities. Then on Saturday, that's when our uh, our actual opening day festivities will take place. So another 105 game, Indians versus Reds. We have the Arizona Skyhawks parachute team that'll be jumping in um, pregame. We also have a dedication of uh, seats for the Wood family. The teams have, um, at our request, Mayor's request, um, graciously donated seats for lifetime for um, season seats. And so we'll be unveiling those at, um, you know, pregame ceremony, and we'll have something special for them. We don't want to 
you know, tell it all now, but um, it'll be a very special presentation. It'll include some, um, like a montage of the of the Wood family to kind of tell the story pregame. So we're excited about that. We'll also have the Millennium High School Band. They were out last year and they have a good time with the festive atmosphere. Um, also face painters, balloon artists. We have a fan souvenir photo booth, so people will be able to have a commemorative photo from this um, this event. As you can see, we did a five-year logo, so we're we're pretty happy about the uh, the fifth anniversary. And so people have a take-home souvenir, and that'll be both Saturday and Sunday. So the 23rd and 24th, fans can go in and just get the uh, the little photo strip um, free of charge. And then we have some giveaways planned. So we will be doing um, some giveaways to the people that that come in first, uh, as well as autograph session uh, tickets. So for our early arrivals, they'll get something special. Um, promotions and discounts, we have our favorites, our fan favorites, like our autograph days, our senior stroll, kids run the bases, play catch on the field, all of the things that make us uh, who we are out there. And uh, we like to think that we're benchmarking for the competition, because we've seen a couple of our competitors steal some of our promotions over the past few years, so we, we kind of <laughs> like that. We set the trend. Um, we have brought back fireworks nights. Those were pretty successful, so we have four of those, um, three Friday night games and a Saturday night game. We have the Souvenir Loyalty Cup that we introduced last year, so it's a $5 purchase and it has $1 refills for the, the all season long. Um, the Australia, the Australia Falls Kid Zone, which is our uh, highly active kid zone with our inflatable activities and the wiffle ball field. Um, and if anyone has seen a game, we know how active that is. Sometimes we wonder where the parents are, but it's okay. It's an open facility, so <laughs> we can see them. Um, then we brought back half-price child tickets. Those do well. Um, the resident offers, everybody should have seen the in focus by now with the, um, the buy one, get one, and the $5 off coupons. And um, we've seen a lot of them turn to the ticket office so far. So those do extremely well. We've introduced the family fun pack again. So it's a four pack of tickets, hot dogs, uh, sodas, and uh, tickets, berm tickets for um, $40 on the berm or 48 if you're in the outfield reserve seating. And then our Ohio days where you buy one berm ticket and get one for a dollar if our two teams are playing each other. So we have five games that that applies to. Um, we introduced anniversary specials this year, one of which is an early bird discount. So people can get half price seating in the outfield box and outfield reserve seating sections. Um, on the weekday games from February 25th through March 8th, as long as they purchase before February 24th. So. Uh, kind of helping out those early birds, early purchasers. And then the Senior Saver Pass, um, which allows seniors a an infill box ticket, which is a great seat, and uh, a hot dog and a small soda for $15. So it's a great deal for them. And then one of our highlights this season, which is uh, new to us, is the... As part of the World Baseball Classic, we have one of the exhibition games, and we have Team Canada coming to play the Reds on March 6th at 7.05. So we will be um, shortly here proclaiming that Canada Day. And we have some fun stuff going on for that game. So we have some Canadian culinary delights, some Canadian beer. Um, we'll be distributing some Canadian flags to be uh, festive to our attendees. And, um, you know, throwing in some, some Canadian trivia throughout the game, so it should be a fun night for all. And then last but not least, where to go to get all your information. Um, we've introduced the new site, GoodyearBP.com, and it is fully stocked with all of our promotions, our ticket discounts, um, and just all the current information, including the Facebook and Twitter feeds you can see on the left-hand side of that page. So. Um, you know, just new news as it comes. We will be posting our lineups for each game on the right-hand side, kind of where the the Indians players are on the top. So, um, if we have any any game changes, a lot of times people like to see the daily lineup before they make the the decision to come to the game. Um, so everything will be current and um, refreshed daily. So check it out, and we're ready for the season. Great, thank you very much. Wait a minute, maybe just some any comments from council or any play ball. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's that's good. Play ball. That's a good one. Anybody would like to? Just, yes. Well, Vice congratulations. Good job on continuing um, great things in Goodyear, and also on that award from uh, the New Times. That's wonderful. And I appreciate that you have uh, mil the band Millennium's going to be playing opening day because I actually had heard from a bunch of different um, superintendents of schools and things that they would love to be able to showcase some of their singers and their bands and things like that at the ballpark. So I appreciate you doing that. 
Well, thank you. Well, it was a, a nice presentation, and we're really excited about this year. And I think when you look at all the information given, you know how successful we were last year, and we're building upon it this year. And so we're we're all looking forward to game day opening. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much. We'll see you all there. And to go along with this, of course, we talk about Canadian Day. So I have a proclamation to read tonight for our, our special uh, Canadian Day and, and paying tribute to the people from Canada. So Canada Day, Canada Day, March 6, 2013, whereas for nearly 275 years, the game of baseball has provided players and legions of fans around the world an outlet and escape to enjoy a game known as our national pastime. And whereas Team Canada and the Cincinnati Reds are dedicated to bring sportsmanship and excitement to fans at Goodyear Ballpark on Wednesday, March 6, 2013, as a part of an exhibition to this year's World Baseball Classic, the premier international baseball event that features 16 teams from around the world. And whereas the city of Goodyear promotes and supports game of baseball and activities that introduce its citizens to the culture of Canada and other countries. And whereas the city of Goodyear promotes and encourages those of all generations to participate and learn about other cultures, specifically the Canadian culture on this day. And whereas March 6 is a day not only to enjoy baseball, but to have fun while learning about the aspects of our Canadian friends and neighbors who live, shop, and play in our community and help support our economy. And whereas the city of Goodyear is privileged and extremely proud to host Team Canada and those Canadian de descendants who support and who support, excuse me, and root for their national team and appreciate their native traditions. Now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Georgia Lord, the mayor of Goodyear, Arizona, do hereby proclaim with much appreciation March 6, 2013 as Canada Day in the city of Goodyear and urge all citizens to observe this special celebration. Given under my hand in these free United States in the city of Goodyear on the 11th day of February, 2013, and to which I have caused the seal of the city of Goodyear to be affixed and have made this proclamation public. And I'd like a round of applause for our Canadian neighbors. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to that day. I think it's going to be lots of fun. The last communication is uh, on the new online commenting website called Goodyear Connects. Katie Wilkin to present. Katie? Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. I'm really excited to introduce the Goodyear Connects website to you tonight. Um, you know, just as an aside, while I was doing research on the website, I learned a couple staggering statistics. Um, only 11.4% of U.S. adults will attend a public meeting this year and 48% of U.S. adults will never attend a public meeting. And as a city planner, that is um, certainly concerning, but it's not surprising, especially in a family-oriented community such as Goodyear. There are so many demands on our time, and it is so hard to attend public meetings. So, of course, um, we have to ask ourselves questions. How do, how do we reach out to these people and get them involved in the process? Because it's so important to hear from them. And so, of course, it seems logical to use the Internet as a way to reach out to these people who may not have enough time Time to engage otherwise. Um, but it's not always enough to put information on our website. We even went as far as trying to post questions on the city website, and it just didn't take off. And so that's when we looked to MindMixer, a private company who specializes in online engagement. And as a side note, um, this is the same company that the city of Phoenix is using on their My Plan Phoenix site, which has been very successful. And so they are experts in creating sites that um, people want to visit and gets us the information that we hope to get from our citizens. And so I just want to take a minute and um, show off the site to you. It's www.goodyearconnects.com. And um, you can see right when you get in, you have this banner page, and it tells you how to sign up. You can sign up with Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, you can also just use your email address, which is how I signed up for the site. And the email address isn't um, visible to the public. Um, and then as you scroll down, you can see right at the top, you can share pictures of Goodyear, and we can use that as a way to even ask specific questions using pictures. Then there's a couple um, featured topics at the top, and then we have more questions um, as you go down. 
And you can see these feature questions. You could, um, I could top, type my idea right in here, or I can go in and see um, comments that other people have made. And what's really cool is I can um, second an idea that someone else has posted, and we already have comments going up, and it, it just went up. Um, and that's such a great way to see, you know, how popular an idea is, because people can second it. And then I can also comment on it, you know, and maybe make a suggestion. You know, I've seen that this community over here has done the same thing. Maybe we can find out how they did it. And then on my end, this little thing isn't popping up here. Um, on the administrator's end, I can then um, let people know what process the idea is in. I can tell them if it's not implementable or if I um, can forward it to either an outside organization or a department within the city to look into it further um, or even a city board that might want to take it on. And then hopefully we'll start having some that I can tag implemented. Um, so that, you know, so it doesn't just stop with them giving us their comment. They can find out what exactly is going on with that idea. And then council members and staff can also post right there and just say, you know, hey, that's a great idea. You know, we'll have to talk about that. And, um, just start interacting with residents and then I just love that as residents can interact with each other too it's not just commenting and then you're done um, some of the topics even have a um, a map component with them so we just put up a fun question at the beginning what's your favorite place to eat and you can see I can just find on the map and put my favorite restaurant and I put mine Dino's I love Dino's <laughs> um, and so then again, you know, people can add on in there too and stuff, but um, there's some other topics that it can be really helpful to use the map so people can show us right where an issue might be in the city and tag it right there for us and we know exactly what they're talking about. Um, let's see, and then on the side here we have some more information. We have um, a video which is kind of hard to play on this um, version and some information about the general plan project. Um, we are using the site mostly for the general plan update, transportation and parks master plans right now, but we hope it takes off and that we can use it for lots of um, different ways to connect with the citizens. Um, there's a who's listening section so the citizens know who's paying attention and of course I put all of you right up there because I know you guys want to hear who? from our citizens. <laughs> but then we also have some of the staff members that are really involved with these projects and it just gives a face for the citizens so they know who's who's listening. I think and it's then, especially nice to have the staff on there. I think yeah, it's, that's good. put the face to the name. And then one of the cool parts is we have a reward store. And um, as you sign up and post ideas, you earn points. And then um, we can put rewards to try and get people to um, get active. And the ballpark was um, nice enough to donate some tickets to do as a reward. And um, we have lunch with the mayor. And um, you know Phoenix is doing some tours and stuff. So that's a great idea. We could do tours of the ballpark and some of our other facilities. So it's just a great way to create an incentive to get people um, active on the site. Um, and then, of course, on my end, I can review the topics, I can look at our users, what age they are, what zip code they're from, um, how they found the site, and so that'll give us, um, and then I can start generating reports and getting that information to management and council so we can all um, use the information, too, on a wide basis rather than just individual ideas. And so, um, you know, I just hope citizens really take advantage of this site because I just want to emphasize we are listening. We're excited to hear ideas. The general plan committee has been nagging me about getting this site done because they really want to hear from the larger community and hear their ideas. So they are going to be watching this site and expecting reports from me um, on ideas. So it's certainly going to be used. And I also want to stress that um, this is just another tool in our toolbox now. This in no way replaces the need for public meetings. Um, we are certainly going to still have lots of public meetings and in fact I have to do a plug for my open house meetings um, <laughs> Tuesday February 26 will be in this room Wednesday February 27th will be at Western Sky Middle School Thursday February 28th will be at Australia Star Point Residence Club and those meetings are all from 6 to 8 30 open house style come when you want and then we'll be on Tuesday March 5th we'll be at Mobile Elementary and that meeting starts at 6 30 and so you can go to goodyearaz.gov slash goodyear2025 for more information about those open house meetings but of course we hope everybody goes to goodyearconnects.com and gets started sharing ideas 
And then I also just have to end mentioning that um, I'm the one who gets to stand up here and tell you about it, but lots of people helped make this happen. Anna Garcia um, is the site administrator along with me. Romina and the entire communications team helped a whole lot. And um, IT, legal, finance, everybody helped make this happen quickly. So um, I just want to thank all the other staff who helped make it happen because we're really excited. I think it's going to be a great tool. That concludes my presentation. Well, I know council. Great, great, great presentation. Great. I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. I know council's going to comment on this. Who would like Sherry? Laura Tano, start first. I, lo I love it, first of all. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. It gets that interaction that we've been asking for. I, I did have one question. Is it monitored by you or someone or comments reviewed before they go on just to make sure that no one um, hijacks the site or, or <laughs> becomes abusive to another resident if there's a disagreement? How is that handled? Um, comments are posted immediately. They, um, my mixer does have filters, so um, words or phrases, you know, it's looking out for, so those will get automatically filtered out. There is a function on there um, to report, so um, we hope that residents self use it, and if um, three people report a post, it'll automatically be taken down. But then that's also part of Anna's and my job, too, is to help monitor the site, and we can block users if a particular user Become becomes abusive. habitually yeah. okay. abusive. Um, we can take care of it that way. Okay. And, and one mm -hmm. more question. When you, when you sign up with Facebook, what I've noticed, a lot of the other comments, places, and, and blogs, and I don't know how this works, um, might be more of a technical question. Um, like in the newspaper, the person's like Facebook profile picture shows up and their name. Is that how this works when the comments show up, or is it just totally just the comments? You know, I'm not sure. I know I added a picture to my profile, and now my picture shows up. You know, I played with it and added some comments, so it wouldn't surprise me. I would, I would think your profile picture would show up, your Facebook or LinkedIn profile picture. Because um, that's how you're oh, signing up. Oh, it's not showing up, up though. I saw my pictures. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just so. curious. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. see that. Link. Any other comments? I have one. Yes, Vice Mayor. Good job. I'm, I'm really excited about that. That's, you know, just like Sherry said, that's something we've been looking for. And you're right. You know, you keep having to plug away at what's going to, mm -hmm. you know, get interaction from people. And, and Sherry actually asked the question I was going to ask. You know, I was sitting there thinking, so if somebody puts on there that Joanne should shave her head and it kept getting second, <laughs> second, second. I'm thinking, how are you going to monitor that? <laughs> so very good. Yeah. I, uh, congratulations. Thanks. How do you do that? <laughs> no, Joe, shake Joe's head. Well, well I, I think it's being transparent and it's getting information uh, to the city. And for those people that don't attend meetings, that uh, want to but maybe can't, or too busy, the, especially exactly. the, the working family. Mm -hmm. So this just really allows us to uh, get a true feeling of how our citizens are feeling and what direction they want the city to go in. So I'm, I'm extremely pleased. I want to thank staff and all their work. And boy, have we come a long way. <laughs> I mean, we had, what, a year ago or something, we, we didn't even have any of these things. And so, um, uh, congratulations, city manager, that we're progressing in, the, in this direction. It's really good. And thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. <clears throat> okay, now is the time for citizens who would like to address the city council on any non-agenda item. Um, and I do have a speaker card. This is on a non-agenda item. I'm yes, Mayor. making that assumption. So, um, Please come forward, but let me just uh, give you directions on this, if I may, uh, because this is always frustrating, but it's, it's laws set up, set up by the state, and we have to abide by them no matter how frustrated. I just want to say that to you tonight, that as a council, sometimes we get frustrated because we're not allowed. But the council will listen to your comments and make, uh, take any one of the following. Um, we can respond to criticism, true criticism, and that has to be pretty extreme before anybody uh, responds to that. Request the staff investigate and report on the matter and request that the matter be scheduled on a future agenda. Uh, each speaker is limited to three minutes. You have a yellow light and a buzzer, and they will let you know when you have 30 <coughs> seconds left to speak. Before you begin, please identify yourself by clearly stating for the record your name and address. So we have tonight uh, Alex Romero, and the non-agenda item is pot shop and smoke shop. Thank you for appearing again, Mr. Good Romero. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Alex Romero. I live at 17511 West Ocotillo Avenue. And I have forwarded information to the City Manager's Office pertaining to a 
paraphernalia shop that's right across the street from Walmart. They are selling bongs and all the paraphernalia needed to smoke uh, all sorts of drugs, not only marijuana, but crack, heroin, and any other drugs. And I went in there and asked if I could buy spice. And the guy said, no, it, uh, they're not making it anymore, but when they do, we'll be selling it. Now, I don't know if you all know what spice is, but it's a horrible drug that's legal. And it's killing people. And people are going on rampages. They're going crazy when they smoke it. Nevertheless, I forwarded a copy of the federal law that prohibits the sale of that kind of paraphernalia. But in spite of that, this city has allowed a shop like that to open up. So I'm here speaking on behalf of my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren to beg and beseech you to do something about it. You can, you can bring about an ordinance that would close these places up. I don't know how many more there are in this city of Goodyear, but I'm a responsible person. I've been before you for the medical marijuana issue, so you know where I'm coming from. So this is just one more item, one more facet of the drug thing, which is an attempt to legalize all drugs. They're already selling the stuff to use drugs. This is insane. I don't know how many of you have children and grandchildren like I do, but we've got to protect those children. And that's what I have to say tonight to you. And again, I end it with saying I beg and beseech you to do something. You can do it. You have the power to do it. I don't. I have a big mouth. I can come here and talk to you. And I will talk to you. I'll come back over and over again until some action is taken. The next step is I'm going to picket that shop constantly. And I have family members that will pick it with, it, with me. And so that's my first step. Then I'll wait for the action of you all. And if there's any questions, I'd like to answer them at this time. Mr. Romero, thank you very much for coming for us. But at this time, we're not allowed to ask any questions. Very so, good. But I, I appreciate the time that you've taken to come and uh, explain to us uh, your cause. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's go to the consent agenda. Will the city clerk please read the consent agendas item 6.1 to 6.2 by title only, please. Item 6.1, approve fiscal year 2012-13, second quarter budget transfers. Item 6.2, approve extending the term of the Goodyear Centennial Committee through February 14, 2014. Thank you very much. Does anyone from the public wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Does anyone from the council wish to remove a... Uh, yes, Councilman Bazillo. I don't want to remove anything, but um, just for clarification on the uh, some of the transfers, um, when they talk about um, contingency, that is holding places. I, I guess more for the general public than it is for uh, myself. But just for clarification, it's good. I guess, Larry, just ex just explain those, that they're holding places. It's not the city's rainy day fund that money is being moved over. Yes, That's all. And again, it's just you for the benefit. Forward, yeah. Larry, cause I, I have the same concern today, uh, and this comes up each time. So I have actually asked if we could have some kind of new uh, additional word onto that that is more explanatory to the public. It's more understandable than the word contingency on that. So please, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you, Mayor, Council <laughs> Member Pazillo. Um, the, the word contingency, as it's meant in there, um, does address a couple of different types of things, but basically it is uh, uh, most of those are just accounting transfers where there's a source of revenue that comes with them and it wasn't in the budget. And you have to have a place to take something from to be able to do it and keep your budget balanced and within the state law. The contingency fund that we refer to as a rainy day fund, which is approximately $16.3 million, I'm going to say for all intents and purposes, cannot be spent for any purpose and will never be included in one of those transfers. If there were a, an emergency, more likely a natural disaster type emergency that were brought forward <coughs> to need that, it would be brought as a separate item by itself for that purpose. Um, does that address... Yeah, and for? address. I just want to make it to the public because when you see the word contingency, Correct. and maybe it's just a title issue, and, and I know exactly what you're talking about because of my background, but I'm not sure the others out there understand that because we talk about contingency when we talk about the rainy day fund, et cetera, and it's not the same thing. So, Correct. Okay. Did that solve your Thank you. Yeah. Uh, could we wait for the other discussion as soon as we take a motion, and then I'll ask, open it for a discussion, okay? Is that 
That's why. Okay. So uh, could I have a motion uh, uh, and a second, please, for the consent agenda? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Campbell and a second by Councilman Stipp. Open for discussion on this. Councilman Stipp. Mayor, I, I don't want to remove the item either. Um, same item, the uh, budget transfers. I just wanted to uh, thank the city manager and the staff. Um, this, obviously, we do every quarter. Um, generates a lot of questions, and I appreciate the responsiveness of not only the manager's office, but also Larry and his staff uh, answering the numerous questions that we have regarding that, at least that I had, uh, not to mention the work session. It, um, if you look at this item just as it sits with the amount of money that we're talking about, we're talking about a lot of money, mm -hmm. and I don't want people to think that this goes unanswered, uh, that there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes, and uh, and uh, I just wanted to acknowledge the staff and thank them for their, uh, their work at that. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, could I ask for a roll call vote, please? Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Loretano? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Barber? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Vice Mayor Osborne? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to, uh, on item 7.1, approve. We will now conduct, uh, excuse me, we will now, I'm having a hard time with my mouth tonight, kind of just doesn't want to say the words. We will now conduct, conduct a public hearing to consider approving a license agreement between the City of Goodyear and the Century Link. So, open public meeting. Mr. Salamando, it's your presentation. Good evening, Mayor Council. Uh, thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, this item is follow-up to the uh, January 28th City Council work session. Uh, that evening, the City Council had an opportunity to review and discuss the draft agreement, uh, which is before you tonight. Um, I do have the presentation uh, loaded up if you'd like to go through it. Um, otherwise, if you prefer, staff is available to answer any questions. We also have uh, Michael DiMaria, who's the Director of Legislative Affairs for CenturyLink. He's also uh, available here tonight for any questions. So you're not doing the presentation? It's, it's at your right. pleasure, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I'm going to just go on. Are there any speaker cards before we get on? Would anybody from the audience like to speak? I guess we'll close the public he hearing then. And we'll have the resolution. Uh, City Clerk, read the resolution 13, 1538 by title only. Adopt Resolution 13-1538, approving the license agreement between the City of Goodyear and CenturyLink to install, operate, and maintain a cable system within the City of Goodyear. Thank you very much. Can I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. We heard uh, a first uh, a motion by Councilman Stipp, and who was the, and uh, by uh, Councilman Barber, a second. I'm open for Council discussion. Councilman Bazillo. Just a comment. It was a very great, um, good um, discussion that we had, you know, in the work session. And uh, I don't want anybody to think we're just not going through the PowerPoint. We covered all of this in the last meeting. It was very thorough. And I, and I wish the uh, company well as they uh, proceed in the city of Goodyear. Thank you. Mayor, I do have a question. Councilman Campbell. Um, I have a comment. Um, is CenturyLink present? Yes. Okay. Um, in our work session, um, I spoke about where they were going to be placing their cable. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be assured that if they have to uh, replace the cable in our streets, that they're repaired back to where they were. Nothing's worse than to have streets cut up and then patched, and then they look awful and they're never patched right yes. and I can only say that because another cable company has a patch in the middle of my street and it doesn't look very good I and they, they shall remain anonymous well, I, bet we can guess. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to but I just want that assurance because that's the only thing our roads we don't have the money to, to keep pouring into our roads and I just want to m make sure that if they do cut or damage any of the roads that they repair them to the specs that 
we need them to be done. I'd like to interject for you, Sam. I guess what we need to know is what is that? What are they required to do? Because, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's like when we repair a crack in a road, mm -hmm. there's always questions. So with it's your true. question, I think that should be addressed so that you, you may be what you're... Uh, yeah, that's probably okay. what I want to know. Yeah, all right. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Councilmember Campbell, and Mayor and Council. Um, there are a number of provisions that are included in the development and the... Um, Contract. Yes, the okay. license agreement okay. uh, that have to do with restoration of property. Uh, the applicant uh, must restore the property to the uh, current standard, uh, which is the city standard existing condition within seven days. And there is a performance bond and also um, there are liquidated damages. Um, so there are certain time frames that they're responsible for restoring the property within seven days. Uh, there are a number of provisions that are included to assure uh, that the property is uh, restored. And we'll and check and make sure it's done correctly. Yeah, they have to pull permits and then okay, they're inspected. You. Perfect. Okay, we're all um, set. Mayor. Yes, I have a question. Vice Mayor. This question is actually for CenturyLink. Michael? Okay. Um, Ironically, after you were here the last time, I think the next week or the week or last week, was it maybe Mesa that uh, had um, an outage where like 10,000 customers were without service? Um, I, saw, I saw a news, a news flash about it, and um, I was wondering if you could update as to what happened there, because it, it was a huge outage for this area, and if it was construction-related or it was related to, could you? There's a road expansion happening in that place, the subcontractor, and I don't know if it was for the city or for ADOT cut our cable. Gotcha. And thus, it, I mean, they cut a fiber optic cable. It took a number of hours to restore because they cut clean through. Uh, the cable so it was due to a road construction project and wasn't something we actually did it's something someone else did to our gotcha. cable so it was just within within a day's time you were able to repair it yes okay thank you i just didn't know what the answer was and i saw this news flash and i went oh well isn't that ironic that it came with the same yeah, i would have appreciated them not throwing our logo up there as, <laughs> as, as if we did it to ourselves but uh, i appreciate the question okay thank you any other questions councilman stip it not a question i um i Appreciate uh, CenturyLink trying to make an effort to get into the market. Uh, competition is a good thing, and uh, I'm glad uh, glad you chose to expand here in the Phoenix market and that you included Goodyear as part of that expansion. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Barber? Aye. Councilmember Stitt? Aye. Vice Mayor Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7 0. Thank you. Let's go to 7.2. Appoint council members to the board, commissions, and committee subcommittee. So now we'll be considering appointing a member of council uh, for the council subcommittee for boards, commissions, committees to replace Gary Gelzer. Uh, Rob Bohr to present. Mayor and Council, as the Mayor mentioned, I'm here for item 7.2, which is to appoint a member of the Council to the Council Subcommittee for Boards and Committee Commissions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, as you know, the subcommittee was created in November 2011. At the time, uh, Councilmember Stipp, Councilmember Campbell, and Councilmember Gelzer were appointed to that <laughs> subcommittee. Um, the, the initial term was to the end of June 2012. Uh, at that point, it was uh, the Council's pleasure to just extend the term uh, to, to another year. So uh, at the end of June 2013, we'll be coming back to you again to, <laughs> to um, appoint one, two, or three of, of the current com commission members, which would be Councilmember Campbell, Councilmember Stipp, and then whoever you choose to appoint tonight. So with that, I can take any questions. Thank you. First, are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Thank you. Anybody from the audience would like to speak on the subject matter? All right, without that, I would like a motion and a second, please, for my council. So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Councilman uh, Stiff. Open Madam, for council oh, discussion. Madam I missed Mayor, something. You, okay, we got to put you somebody on. You need to name the oh. person. <laughs> That's why we didn't say anything. 
Well, I, that was a send off. All right. I didn't want to leave Councilmember Campbell hanging out there. All right. So. I appreciate it. Let's wind this I back. I was hanging all right. Okay, sorry. Excuse uh, does anybody on the council, now we're going to make a recommendation, would like to make a recommendation to fill Councilman Gilzer's position? Um, Mayor. Somebody, yes. I would like to um, move that Vice Mayor Joanne Osborne be added to the committee. Second. Second. We have a, a, a suggestion uh, or a motion for a a Vice Mayor Osborne to be placed on this committee. We have a second by uh, Councilman Vazillo. Open for discussion here. I just wanted to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Quick. Uh, actually, if I appreciate the the uh, nomination, I appreciate that. And I had actually brought it to the mayor's attention that we still only had two people doing it, and it wasn't asking that I be on it. So, if truly, if one of you wanted to be, it doesn't have to be me. I just wanted to make sure we had that third person. So, for the record, but I appreciate that, and I will be happy to take that responsibility, but I want to make sure nobody else wants it. <laughs> I, I think they've spoken. Uh, okay. That, well, I do. That they thought <laughs> that you'd do a good job. Well, I appreciate I that. mean, I almost missed naming anybody. So, <laughs> so did I. I feel, like it's a, I feel like I've accomplished a great deal right now that I have some name out there for the public. I'm sorry. Don't you love it? Huh? Oh, well, yeah. Sorry. All right, so where are we now? Okay. Take a vote. Take We're a vote. <laughs> That's all I need to do, and I only have to put all in favor for Vice Mayor Osborne to Fill be on name. this committee say aye. 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 The ayes have okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So congratulations. And I all think right. you're going to be busy right away, I understand. Very busy. Yeah, and I'm going to have to not be there. <laughs> Well, the, you'll have to figure that out. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I can't help you on that I know one. that. <laughs> okay, now let's go to information items. Does anybody uh, on the council have any accommodations, reports, or anything? Amir, I've got a quick one, if I may. Councilman Campbell. Uh, this morning, uh, I attended a breakfast at the Pendergrass Elementary School District, which was caring for our community, a collaboration breakfast. And it was... Um, done um, to adopt a school and for snack which is um, a program that is going out into the community to teach caregivers how to do better nutrition with the youngsters that they are taking care of and it was very interesting and as you know I sit on the West Valley Alliance Human Services Alliance and this was just part of our networking and it was very interesting and I thoroughly enjoyed that you call it snag, and snag with a G, snag, snack. Oh, snack. snack like S N A C K. You're Thank catching you. it from your mayor. <laughs> yes, and I also attended a meeting this morning in Pebble Creek um, after the breakfast, and we had a real estate agent that talked to us about the real estate market in Goodyear. And um, she had some very positive things to say about it, so we were. Uh, excited to hear that and we certainly hope it continues so thank you you're welcome Councilman Basile. Um I attended the Southwest Lending Closet board meeting this morning and uh, what's real important and I want an announcement I mentioned something to John is my little Sophia sold over 300 Girl Scout cookies Yay. as a daisy again she's not quite at the level of brownie she's five years old but she sold 300 boxes so I want to give a shout out to my uh, Sophia <laughs> oh. said like a proud grandfather you, you got it uh, councilman who, Stip just a couple of updates we had um, uh, I had a, a orientation to the AMWA board as the city's new rep and that was uh, uh, that was very interesting. I appreciate uh, Mark Holmes, our uh, water director, and uh, Matt give me a uh, start the long road of education uh, in water. That was great. Um, I also had a t attended, and I'm not going to mention the company's name for obvious reasons here in just a second, but what sounded to be a how to serve your constituents better and how to better communicate presentation which turned more into a sales pitch on how they're, and I should have known better, I'm an adult, but um, how to, uh, it turned into a 311 discussion. 
and uh, come to find out that 311 is already being investigated through MAG and that our own Chris Nadu is, is on that uh, regional committee. So I think had that uh, flyer said 311 on it, I would have yeah, opted for something else. So um, you may have seen that in the council uh, packet that I attended that, and it was um, um, time I could have probably spent better else somewhere else. Uh, it's for the 411. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to celebrate was, uh, and all of us were there uh, at various times, was the uh, uh, one-year anniversary of um, the Star Point Cafe yeah, up in uh, up in Australia. Uh, it was uh, very well attended for a 3 p.m. Uh, afternoon uh, session, but it was great to... Uh, help uh, Rose and Michael celebrate their uh, one-year anniversary. Thank you. Councilman Loretano. Um, we all attend a lot of things. There's just a couple things I want to mention. Um, I attend the MAG Regional Domestic Violence Meeting, and I think that's really important um, considering some of the issues going on uh, about domestic violence in the community. Um, and I also attended with the mayor and several other council members the Read On um, to become a read on city it was the kickoff for that and having a mother of a third grader i thought that was very very important because reading proficiency at the third grade is very important that's actually a kind of a tool that they can measure to see who's going to be able to succeed and who's going to actually um end up incarcerated at some point that's kind of how they look at the prison populations i learned at the flynn which i thought was really interesting so it was just really great to see so many people behind and our mayor behind the the reading effort in the city and everything and shout out to my, i'm a brownie leader so shout out to my girl scout troop and thank you wally for buying cookies and jen's also her daughter's in my troop so go brownies <laughs> that's getting pretty competitive up here <laughs> they didn't sell 300 mine did wow um any other vice mayor yeah uh, I attended the Arizona um, Bioscience Roadmap, and well, I tell you, for Arizona, that is, that's an industry that really is uh, a good industry that's coming to fruition for Arizona, and I think that's something that as we look at um, highlighting Goodyear it could be something that we go after. Uh, and just to let you know that for jobs um, in the biosciences, the progress, we are up 45% from 2002 to 11, this is this is in Arizona. Um, 99,000 jobs compared to only 12 percent for the U.S. gain. So that that tells you something right there. We have our firms are up 31 percent, um, and for the for the nation it was 23 percent. Wages are up 44 percent. The annual salary for one of these jobs is 56 thousand dollars, and um, the economic impact for the state bioscience sector generates $28.8 billion in annual revenue, and that's about $1.1 billion in state and local taxes. So I thought that would be was some information you would be interested in. Um, I wanted to give a congratulations to Romina and John for putting together the legislation dinner that we had. I think that opening the doors of communication was very important, and I know that in the six years I've been on council, I have certainly have never had that kind of conversation with our legislatures, and I, and I believe that that was a, a powerful thing that we did. Um, I also want to give a shout out to a couple teenagers. One of them, who's on my Teen Action Council, actually represented Goodyear. She was with Alice, Alex Trebek on Jeopardy as one of the teen oh. Jeopardy players. She did not win, but she represented Goodyear well and actually talked about Goodyear a couple times. She also is Miss Goodyear in some beauty pageants. So I thought I want to give her a shout out. And also to a very special young man uh, in my life that starts chemo tomorrow. And I just wanted to give him a very special shout out. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Councilman Barber. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, again, the Star Point Cafe, that was a wonderful ribbon cutting and uh, anniversary for them. In the last seven and a half years, I've seen that cafe change hands quite a bit. So it's great to have someone there who loves the community. They're committed to that area. And it was just a great event. Um, the legislative dinner was one of the best ideas I think I've ever seen. Uh, a local community come up with because I really think that cities all across America should do what we did last week. Just 
being able to understand that we're all humans, uh, the face-to-face and, and the conversation I think is so important. And I, I, thank you, Romina, and uh, everyone involved. I, that was great. And then Frogo was opened in Australia, our new little yogurt shop. And there were tons of people there, and they had a wonderful opening. And that's what the community is all about. I mean, there were so many people there, and it was wonderful to see that. So Great. Yeah. Good news. All right. I'll, the my last thing I'd like to say about it is, it's true. The Romina, um, the job she did on get, you know organizing that for our, our legislature to sit down over a dinner and have a face-to-face discussion. And I will tell you, uh, the result of that is very positive. I received a call from Senator Shooter today, talking about an issue. Um, and he wanted me to know uh, the progress that he and the governor uh, were making and some of the direction they were going in and it allowed me uh, the opportunity to email him back uh, after I sat down and digested uh, what he told me to get uh, to uh, express how our city's position is on this issue so there's you know there's something that took action quite quickly well met with them last week so I think each one of those legislators that you met the other night, they were sincere in reacting to what's happening to our cities. So I'm, I'm quite hopeful. So uh, kudos to staff for arranging that because it was not easy. If you think getting seven council people together and getting the legislature together at the same time, it all make it very difficult. So she juggled that very well. So uh, city manager, uh, any report? Um. Mayor, members of the council, there are no follow-up items tonight. I do have uh, uh, three information items. First is a heart and soul. Uh, we had the eighth annual heart and soul 5K run, walk, and one mile fun run. Yes, you can have, I guess, fun running a mile. Uh, presented by the West Valley Hospital. It was held this past Saturday, February 9th. Uh, starts and started and finished inside the Goodyear ballpark. Even though weather was not the best, we still had a good uh, turnout. 270 in attendance with over 200 people running in either the 5K or the One Mile Fun Run. Um, seven vendors. And I think it's important to point out because they really sponsored this. Tropical Smoothie here locally, LA Fitness. Uh, Eleutheria Wellness Center, and I butchered that name. I apologize to them. Uh, Arizona Orthopedic Physical Therapy, CrossFit Fury. Foot Solutions and Estrella Parkway Medical Center, as well as West Valley Hospital, um, had their own table as well. So it was our local businesses really helping to support the event. Um, all the vendors donated items for the goodie bags. Um, four different Walmart stores donated about 100 pounds of bananas and boxes of granola bars. And uh, just really want to thank our, our community partners that, that helped make this possible. Um, it's part of our charge is to really provide uh, uh, venues where we, we keep fit and, and uh, it's good for uh, our public. I do have a couple of announcements. Uh, uh, introduction on our new IT director, Dan Cotterman. Dan, stand up, hold your hand high. Go Lopes. <laughs> Dan started uh, with us on February 4th and comes to us from the Grand Canyon University where he served as director of IT infrastructure since 2009. Uh, and Dan worked prior to uh, Glendale Community, he worked 10 years with the University of Phoenix Apollo Group, Bachelor of Science in Info Technology, as well as a Master of Information Systems graduate degree. Um, we were impressed with his uh, successful track record improving service delivery, which is what we uh, always strive for and focus on creating efficiencies, reducing costs. So that came through very clearly. Um, as we had an opportunity to get to learn more about him. So uh, thankful that he's on board. He fills a role that uh, when Kathy Fernandez um, uh, left government uh, in oh, uh, nearly a year ago now. Uh, so uh, are, are looking forward to him joining us. We did have Manny Mejia um, who served as the interim during that time and very thankful for his efforts. Um, the next one, and you just got this announcement from me, we do have a new deputy city manager. We did an internal recruitment. And when that reads, stand up, wave your hand. <laughs> you. 
So we have now, uh, in addition to Bob Beckley, uh, Winnett is our, our, our second and last recruitment for deputy city manager. A little uh, quick uh, uh, information about her. She's been in government for about 20 plus years. I'll stop there. <laughs> Including 12 years in management leadership roles. We have tasked her with a lot of things since she's been with us uh, uh, since fall of 2011. A lot of positive impacts, everything from performance measures to work, uh, uh, classification compensation uh, to our uh, human resource capital plan, uh, human capital plan, uh, the list goes on and on. And she's been a key member as well of our executive team for budgets. So uh, leaned on her for a lot of things over the past year. Uh, very excited about the leadership she brings. Uh, uh, many of us have interacted and have seen those, those skills that she brings. So when that, congratulations and, and welcome. Um, and Mayor, that's all I have for tonight. Well, just uh, on Wynette, Wynette uh, you have a great honor. You're the first woman that has been put in a position of a deputy city manager. Um, so that, that that's quite an inroad, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So congratulations. And we all know how capable you are, and we're looking forward to working more closely with you. Okay, uh, Councilman Stiff had one more thing he wanted to add. You know, I always throw this off at the very end of the meeting. Um, I did have a question for the manager and perhaps the rest for of the council. For an inquiry to do? Yeah, yeah. Okay, actually well, two of them. That's good, then. that's where we're supposed to be, so go oh, ahead. Oh, I'm, so I'm yes. right, I'm per perfect, okay. Uh, our next meeting is the 25th, which is a work session, starts at 5.30. I'm throwing it to the manager, to the mayor, to the rest of the council. Should we perhaps move that to five? We um, can't seem to be able to I, do I anything in a half my, an hour. on this record that you have here, so I don't know where the 530 came from. 530 is on our, uh, it's on the agenda. It's mine. Mine says five, so uh, we have. Mine says 530. Yeah, so. Uh, Can we do it at five? Does anybody object to doing it at five o'clock? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mayor, members of the council, uh, that, that work session, um, it was scheduled 5.30 because it was uh, thought not to take a full hour. That being said, uh, err on the side of caution because we do have the public hearing at 6 o'clock. So if council's available, we, we can post that uh, at 5. Was this a premonition? You put 5 on mine and 5.30 on theirs, or was it just? <laughs> it was originally 5, and then they had oh, talked about okay. changing it to 5.30. Just curious. <laughs> okay, so... Um, so it'll be 5 o'clock on the 25th. We'll Perfect. have a work session at 5 and a regular meeting at 6. Okay. Any other question? question two. Yes. Um, Mr. Dalkey, and perhaps the police chief or the attorney, our previous speaker tonight, Mr. Romero, seemed to indicate that we have uh, ignored our responsibility regarding the sale of illegal drug or Ill illegal drug paraphernalia. I'm fairly certain that's not the case, but I'd like to hear that from somebody on city staff. Th that's a direct criticism, I think it. Yes, and you could have addressed it earlier if you wanted to uh, at the time. Okay. Can we have it on communications? Now, now, or now I'm not now. sure we yeah, can. Yeah, it, now it, it wasn't sure on the can. agenda, so I, I think we're probably better off reporting it back to council at a later no. date. I mean, okay. And I think he also asked a, qu a question about some ordinances and whether or not we could regulate that further and um, if council would like I can do a little work on that and and give you some feedback on that as well sure I'm just more worried about the the uh, he in, intimated that we are not doing our legal responsibility and that I feel like that's a, yeah. pretty brief but, can we briefly just but say yes we are a, or no we're not criticism and we he could did, have addressed it that at we that time the laws, so. yeah okay so we're gonna so we're okay with this briefly Brief. briefly good evening mayor and council and actually there, there are really three reasons or issues um, surrounding the enforcement of drug paraphernalia and just real quickly one you know there's a federal versus state statute uh, we don't enforce federal statutes we enforce state statutes also there are numerous criteria involved with determining if something is drug paraphernalia and um, just selling items does not make it illegal so the bottom line is briefly that um, you know there, there's no law against selling items as he's referring to okay so we are not in violation we are not in of violation. our charter etc thank you very much okay now just a reminder before I 
dismiss this meeting that we're going to reconvene for an executive session, all right? So all questions have been answered and asked. All right, I'm going to close this meeting and we'll uh, recess the executive session. No reconvene.